We are currently in uh, Karoo uh, Wildlife Preserve, which is actually a private um, preserve in Costa Rica. Um, it's on the Nicoya Peninsula, where um, we have been studying birds for the past three seasons. Um, our project is called Nicoya Peninsula Avian Research. Um, and currently, I'm about to take a bird out of a bag um, to start processing it. Um, our main objective here is to um, actually uh, look at uh, neotropical migrants and start to try to understand where they um, come and where they reside. Um, so that's our main focus. Um, the project um, that does this primarily is called Moisey. And these stations are set up throughout Central America. Um, and they uh, focus on habitats that known migrants are coming to um, so that we can better understand why they're coming to those areas and why we need to preserve those areas further. Um, this bird is a northern water thrush. Um, a lot of people are familiar back home with this bird because it is a breeder um, in our area. Um, they usually like streams and uh, fast moving areas to breed along. Um, they build their nests on the uh, kind of the bank sides of cavities. Um, this is one of our more common birds here because we are actually, although uh, it doesn't look like it here, we are uh, very close to a mango estuary. Um, where a lot of our birds um, decide to winter um, because of the viability of habitat. It's very similar to some of the areas they breed in. Um, it also um, has a lot of food. So, one of the more important things. And one of the main reasons they come down here. So right now I am putting a North American band on it that will be, the data will be collected by the USGS and Institute for Bird Populations, which keeps track of all of our birds and species that we band down here. So this bird has been banded and will forever have this band. Um, and objectively we hope that this bird some point will get recovered so that we can maybe find out where it's being seen. Um, who knows, maybe even in a backyard near you. Um, when I was processing this, I quickly looked and saw that it was actually a hatchier bird. So this bird miraculously made the first trip down here over thousands of miles and managed to come here to this area. Um, currently we're actually having great success with uh, recovering, in particular northern wild thrushes, um, meaning that we banded them in our previous seasons and they're being found here in the exact same habitat in the same areas and that is one of the main goals because it shows how important it is to preserve habitat down here and how the birds are so honed into a particular area so um, what I do basically is I take measurements like the wing length and the tail length um, these things can help with sexing and aging birds. Um, I take a look at the fat to see how um, kind of the health of the bird is and how it's doing um, getting its um, nutrition values down here. Um, right now this bird you know keeps kind of a low fat um, and it just kind of feeds um, but by the time it gets close to migrating it will fatten itself up completely um, for the long journey home. So once we start getting birds that have these exorbitant amounts of fat, we kind of know it's their time they're going to start leaving, which kind of happens, you know, end of February, beginning of March, because sometimes they're, they'll have a couple stopovers before they go. So this bird has been completed, and it is all done, and it will be released back into the preserve. So you have theoretically watched the successful capture, banding, and release other birds.